Hi, my name is Vincent, and today I want to take a look at how to find the antiderivative of a pretty complicated integral. So we have the integral of sine inverse x squared dx. To start this off, we're going to use a u substitution. And we're going to let u equal sine inverse x. So with this definition of u, we could start by taking the derivative. But first, let's take a look at what would happen if we took sine of both sides. Well, we'll have sine of u is equal to x. And we'll see what does this look like if we modeled it with a right triangle. So if we drew a right triangle out here, call the angle u, then since sine of u is equal to x, we could label the opposite side x, and we could label the hypotenuse 1. Because if we look at the ratio, opposite over hypotenuse, x over 1 would equal x. And if we use Pythagorean theorem, that's going to tell us the missing side is radical 1 minus x squared. And we're going to need this information later on, but for now we're just going to leave it off to the side. And what we could do next is now we could start taking the derivative of u. So we'll have du equals, and the derivative of sine inverse x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared times dx. And what we're going to do now is solve for dx. And we could solve for dx if we multiply both sides by radical 1 minus x squared. And we'll have radical 1 minus x squared times du is equal to dx. And with these components here, this component and this component up here, we could transform our integral so that we could start to solve this here. So looking at the integral, if we start off, we're going to have, we'll kind of just make a dividing line here so our work doesn't collide. If we look up here, so if we look up here, we could rewrite this now as the integral of u squared. And instead of dx, we're going to replace dx with radical 1 minus x squared du. Now it may seem like we didn't accomplish anything here because our integral is still in terms of x, but we could get rid of x squared if we look at this equation and square both sides. So we could look at, if we square both sides, we'll have sine squared u is equal to x squared. So for the next line here, we're going to have the integral of u squared times 1 minus sine squared u and we just tack on this du here. For the next stage, we're going to use a Pythagorean identity. So we'll have u squared times the square root of, and 1 minus sine squared, we'll simplify to cosine squared u. So then for the next phase, we're just going to have u squared times cosine u du. The square root of cosine squared is just cosine. With this integral here, maybe we'll just drag this up, or we're going to focus on this here. Maybe we'll just highlight it. Okay, this integral here is going to bring us to the next and final stage of our problem, where we're going to evaluate it using integration by parts. But instead of actually writing out integration by parts the long way, especially that we're going to have to do it twice, we're going to use an algorithm called uh, the tic-tac-toe method. It's really just a fast hand way of doing integration by parts. Because if we have to do it twice, that's going to take a lot of space. And this is just a really neat method to speed up the process. So we start off, we could write u squared. We're going to write the next part of our integral, which is cosine u. And for the last part here, we're going to record the sign changes. Now, the way this algorithm works is we start off with the first term. And in this case, our first term is u squared. And we keep taking the derivative until we've exhausted it completely. And what I mean by that is if we take the derivative, we'll get 2u. If we take another derivative, we're going to get 2. And if we take one last derivative, we'll get 0. And when we get 0, we stop. And then we move to the next column. And in this column, we're going to take an antiderivative. And we keep doing that until we fill all these spaces. So the antiderivative of cosine is positive sine. The antiderivative of sine u is negative cosine u. And the antiderivative of negative cosine u 
is negative sine of u. So for the next phase here, the way this pattern is going to work is we start off with a plus sign. And depending on how many rows we need, we just keep alternating. So we'll have plus, minus, and plus. So then to find our integral here, to evaluate this integral boxed off here, we're just going to go ahead and look at the following alignment here. So we make this drawing here. We, we drop down, like, you know, diagonal to the right, and we go across. So we drop down, and we go across. And then we do it once more because now we're out. So then what this is going to tell us is that our integral, we multiplied the terms on the string. We're going to have u squared times sine u. And the plus sign here tells us to keep the sign the same. So we have a positive u squared sine u, and we're going to keep it positive. The next product, and remember this was a minus here, the next product is 2u times negative cosine u, which will be negative 2u cosine u. And the minus at the end tells us to change this. So we're going to change it to positive. And then next, we're going to have 2 times negative sine u, which is negative 2 sine u. And the plus tells us to keep this sign. So we're going to keep it negative. And then we tack on our plus c. So to write out our final answer, now we have to substitute back in terms of u. So if we look here, u squared, if u is equal to sine inverse x, then u squared would be sine inverse of x squared. So we'll have in parentheses sine inverse of x squared. Now this next part, sine of u, we could refer to the triangle or our definition here. Sine of u is equal to x, or we could say opposite over hypotenuse is x over 1, or just x. So we have sine of u is equal to x plus 2 times u, and u is sine inverse x. Okay, now this next part here, this one could be tricky, but the triangle is really going to help us here. So we have cosine of u. Cosine of u, we're going to have adjacent. If we write it out, cosine of u is the ratio of the adjacent side. So we'll have 1 minus x squared under the radical over the hypotenuse 1. So for here, cosine of u is just going to be radical 1 minus x squared. That's why the triangle comes in handy, because it helps us in the end. And we have minus 2 times sine of u. Well, sine of u is still equal to x. And then we tack on our plus c. So this quantity here, or this whole expression, I should say, this whole expression, whoops, it all went away, is our final answer. So this is the solution to our complicated integral expression. All right, well, if you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe. And thank you all for watching.